Thousands of people without power this morning after overnight storms. We'll keep you updated as crews work to get everyone restored. And we're learning more about the Davenport couple killed in their home this week and who police say made the 911 call. WHBF is local for you. This is Local 4 News this morning. Good morning and thanks for watching Local 4 News this Friday morning. I'm James Sears. And I'm Emily Scarlett. First, people in the Quad Cities are waking up to a big mess this morning. Right, a storm packing strong winds and rain hit the area late last night. This is video from Bettendorf. As you can see, those winds knocked down trees and power lines. Branches were scattered across streets and several houses were damaged. The storms also spawned a few possible tornadoes. And we're joined again by meteorologist Anthony Peoples. Anthony, have any of these tornadoes actually been confirmed at this time? Well, we, we've had them confirmed by our trained weather spotters. However, that's the first stage. What will happen now is meteorologists from the National Weather Service office in the Quad Cities, they'll go out and they'll survey the damage. They'll look for rotation in the fallen trees and limbs to see if there's a pattern that shows that there was rotation, which would indicate a tornado. Otherwise, uh, we may have just had some straight line winds in some of our hometowns and uh, we are also know here in the Quad Cities we've had uh, straight line winds of over 100 miles per hour before and that can cause just as much damage as a weak tornado but we did have a couple of uh, tornadoes reported by weather spotters last night in Scott County around Stockton a weather re a spotter uh, said that there was a tornado on the ground for about 12 to 15 minutes there and on the east side of Muscatine right about 1019 that was the one that prompted the first tornado warning across Across the area and then we had one for the quad cities and then areas to the east and northeast of here but uh, again the crews will be out today surveying the damage the good news while many people may have to clean up uh, the the d damage and debris uh, better weather is expected here for the weekend well that is certainly good news thank you anthony but at the height of the storm as many as 21,000 people in the quad cities lost power at last check that number was cut by about half According to MidAmerican Energy, about 4,300 are still without power. On the Iowa side, it's around 100 in Illinois. MidAmerican assures us crews will continue working until everyone's power is restored. Now to, de to a developing story out of Davenport. That's where police are searching for a shooting suspect. Shots rang out around 9 o'clock last night. Police say at least seven shots were fired on West 11th Street. One man was hit. He was taken to the hospital, but police have not said how serious his injuries are. Officers say the shooter was last seen running toward Harrington Park. They don't have a detailed description of the suspect. We're learning more about the murder of a Davenport couple that happened earlier this week. Police say the 911 call to report Wednesday's double murder came from the suspect. 20-year-old Sean Fries made his first court appearance yesterday on two counts of murder for the deaths of his parents. Detectives say he made the emergency call after killing Kevin and Donna Fries. A local 4 News investigation also found the suspect has a recent criminal past. Fries pleaded guilty in March to charges of trespassing and possessing a dangerous weapon. He's being held on a million dollar bond. And some of the people who spent a lot of time working and volunteering alongside Donna and Kevin Freese are sharing their story. The Freeses were involved in dozens of nonprofit organizations around the Quad Cities. Donna actively volunteered with the Chamber of Commerce. Local Forest Carrie Keene has more on the impact they made. The Quad Cities Chamber of Commerce held their Young Professionals Networking at Night event Thursday night. People from across the chamber were remembering the work that Donna and Kevin did in the community. We talk about the kind of life that they lived, the contribution they made to this com community, and realize that we've lost a great couple, and we have a legacy that they've left behind that we're going to have to fill. Gellerman says Donna and Kevin Fries were involved in dozens of nonprofit organizations around the Quad Cities. Donna volunteered with the Chamber, and Kevin was involved with a lot of downtown development. Not only were they good business people, but good friends. Donna and Kevin were very entrepreneurial. They had uh, several different businesses and they were very talented in being able to be kind of mentors to other small businesses. They had a lot of friends and everyone they met thought they were a friend. And they were proud to live in this community, always trying to help improve it. They were really proud to be a part of the Quad Cities. 
and they demonstrated that by their commitment to so many things that they did. And she was a very proud Quad Citizen. She was proud of the community. She served this community well. She did everything she could really to advance the chamber and champion the region. Friends of the Freezes know their positivity will live on, like in the Young Professionals Networking event tonight. The decorations were supplied by an organization Donna started that helps nonprofits put on events. The mark they made in the Quad Cities community will continue long after they're gone. Exceptionally kind and generous people. And I just, uh, I think it's important that that's what we remember about Donna and Kevin and that that be the legacy that lives on. Many people Local 4 spoke to were still too shocked to talk about Donna and Kevin, but it was obvious that they touched many lives and for the better. Carrie Keene, Local 4 News. Thanks for that, Carrie. This morning, Hurricane Matthew is bearing down on Florida, touching down overnight as a Category 3 storm. Matthew moved north from the Bahamas yesterday, bringing heavy rain, powerful winds, and a massive storm surge. The deadly storm is expected to bring similar conditions to Georgia this evening before moving on to the Carolinas and out to sea this weekend. Meanwhile in politics, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump continue gearing up for their second presidential debate. Local 4 is your local election headquarters. The Republican nominee held an hour-long town hall event in New Hampshire yesterday, but insists he wasn't practicing. Trump and Clinton are set to tackle the issues this Sunday in St. Louis in a town hall-style face-off. Meanwhile, President Obama will make his way back to Chicago today. The president will attend a fundraiser for Hillary Clinton and Democratic Senate candidate Tammy Duckworth. President Obama has said he would cast an early ballot for Clinton this month in Chicago. The White House has not confirmed if that will happen today. Today, the Davenport Police Department invites you to join them for a cup of joe. It's National Coffee with the Cop Day. The mission of the campaign is to break down barriers between police officers and the citizens they serve. Davenport Police will be at High V North Gate on East Kimberly Road between 7 and 9 this morning. Everyone is welcome to join. James, you know, Anthony was just mentioning that he wasn't sure when to switch from the iced coffee to the <laughs> hot coffee. I'm thinking today might be a good day for hot coffee. Sounds like it, Anthony. What do you think? Well, if it's not today, definitely by tomorrow morning, Emily, because uh, some of our northern hometowns could be in the mid to upper 30s when you wake up tomorrow morning. So on top of the cool down, we're, of course, talking about cleanup from last night's storms. Yeah, we did have quite a bit of damage across Muscatine and Scott counties. Even in Rock Island County, there were uh, some reports of some limbs down. But you see over the past six hours uh, at the height of the storm when we had the tornado warnings across the area and uh, the severe weather, uh, things have really quietened down now as the front is moving through. Winds are going to start picking up and we're going to see those temperatures continue to drop. Right now we have 58 degrees in the Quad Cities. We have a west wind at 18 miles per hour. Winds today will be around 20 to 30 miles per hour. We'll see these temperatures drop a few more degrees and then we'll start to see them rebound as we go through the afternoon. So we could drop a few more degrees here as the showers have pretty much ended. And then as we go through the afternoon, it's going to be a breezy one with more in the way of sunshine. High temperature. Make, make it up to about 63 this afternoon. I don't want to say high temperature and stress that because we've already been up to 64 earlier this morning. So that's the official high temperature. But later this afternoon, we'll make it back up to around 63. All right. So mo the storm's moving out. So we're in the clear now. We're in the clear. Now it's time to just uh, enjoy some fall like weather as we head into the weekend. Thanks for that, Anthony. Well, he just recently opened for Little Big Town. This morning, he's performing for us. Country music star TJ is live in the studio. There he is right after the break. The time now is 6.09. TJ's up next. WHBF is local for you with James Sears, Emily Scarlett, and meteorologist Anthony Peoples. This is Local 4 News this morning in high definition.